All right, what's going on guys and welcome everybody back to the channel. Today we have 100 tips and tricks for Call of Duty Warzone to learn everything. Now this is Call of Duty's newest take on Battle Royale and it is a free to play game mode for all platforms. So today I figured we'd look at 100 tips and tricks to make your transition into this game a lot easier and smooth. It brings in a lot of elements from other Battle Royale games you might be used to but with a twist on some of them. So we're going to go over everything you'll need to know in that in this video. Just before we get started, this video did take a very long time to make. So if you could leave a like rating, that would be very much appreciated. That's all I ask of you guys. And of course, if you're brand new, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this and plenty more Battle Royale things to come. So anyways, guys, let's dive into 100 tips and tricks for Call of Duty Warzone that you need to know to learn everything. First things first, number 100, Warzone only operates in three-man squads, so this is going to fundamentally determine how you play the game. There's no solos right now, and there's no duos. This may change in the future, but at the time of me making this video, it is three-man squads only, so you can play by yourself if you choose to do so, but you're always going to be put at a disadvantage up against squads and not necessarily in a solo or duo lobby. Number 99, the gas or the zone on here deals an incredible amount of damage, even in the earlier zones. So there's really going to be no zone camping very much. Uh, this probably deals the highest amount of damage for, per zone of any BR game that I've played, period. Not only does the zone deal a ton of damage, but you're also able to see the first safe ring already as soon as you spawn in. While you're in the plane, the first safe zone is already going to appear, so you don't need to guess on where it's going to land. Number 98, there is no attachment swapping in this game. Whatever your gun comes with is what what you get. There's nothing interchangeable like there is in other BR games or in Blackout where you could interchange scopes or muzzle attachments. It does simplify the game to some degree, but you also have less customizability when it comes to how you want to run a particular gun. 97, there is no friendly fire in this game. You can shoot at your teammates, you can shoot through them with whatever, and they will not take any damage. So when you're up against in a very close gunfight, it doesn't matter if your teammates are standing in front of you while you're spraying because you won't be able to damage them anyways. 96, a lot of weapons in this game have a fire mode adjustment. Adjuster. And you can do this by hitting a button on your D-pad on a controller or usually B on a keyboard. And this is going to change between full auto, single, and sometimes burst for a couple of weapons. Now, generally, I recommend staying in full auto, even if you're spraying at a long distance. Burst fire is incredibly inconsistent, and I recommend keeping it in full auto, but single tapping, getting good with your trigger finger to not have to rely on the single tap option. However, if you do feel like you need it, it is always there. 95, you can crouch and prone while reviving teammates. Now, the reason this is important, you're not not able to move around your teammate as you're reviving them, but if somebody is shooting at you, you can prone and keep crouching to avoid that lethal headshot. It's not a lot of movement, but it does keep you from just being a sitting duck. 94, health regen in this game is automatic. It's very similar to multiplayer, but there is a system of armor, which we'll talk about in a minute, but health regen, you don't have to worry about carrying heals or anything or healing after a gunfight, more or less. It's just an automatic process, which really does do a lot to speed up the game, in my opinion, and I think for a game like this is the was the necessary change 93 armor is the new healing system in this game now aside from your health bar which is shown in white the blue triple bar is how much armor you currently have and you'll spawn in every game with two pieces of that and you can fill up the third one by looting some armor within the match now, while this armor does help in gunfights, it's important to know that if you're in caught in the gas in the zone, it will actually chunk down your armor bar as well and not just your health. 92, weapons and equipment have different rarities in this game. So there's gray, which is the most common, green, blue, purple, and orange. And these all represent different rarities and then also different versions of attachments that are on said weapons. So you can find a potentially a scar that is either a gray version or a blue version, for example, and the blue version will have two more attachments than the gray build. It's a very simple system to understand. The orange is obviously going to have a fully kitted out set of attachments, and then purple is going to be, you know, pretty good, but not quite fully done. The weapons do not deal any extra damage depending on their rarity. It's just an attachment thing. 91, loadout drops can be purchased, and they actually pull from your multiplayer create a class slots. Now, if you've never played the multiplayer, then it'll give you an option to create some, but these, if you have already played the MP, you can design one in there, and then buying a loadout crate will allow you to pick any single one of your create a class menus with everything on it. That includes weapons, perks, and attachments. It's a very good purchase. Tip number 90, there is an in-game economy which you have to manage with your team. Now, you can see your cash bar at the bottom left of your screen under your name and all of your teammates. You can either choose to pile your cash together to buy killstreaks or you can save it for yourself buying quick revives and that sort of thing. You can earn money by completing contracts, getting kills, or just simply looting. 
89, the ghost perk you can get from your multiplayer loadouts is very effective against enemies using UAVs on you. You can become completely invisible to them along with some other perks, but I think it is very important to run that on here. Otherwise, you are fair game for every eye in the sky. 88, recon drones can actually not tag people using the ghost perk. This allows you to stay away from also drones that are equipment that fly around and can tag you up for a significantly long period of time. Using the perk is a great way to stay off the radar in every sense and just play a lot more stealthy. 87, there are multiple different vehicles in Warzone and they all have slightly different handling properties, speeds, and ways you should go about taking them down. Now the helicopter is arguably the best one that's going to give you the most distance and obviously you'll be in the sky so you'll be able to see people much better. Now, some of the ones like the ATV are very quick, but they leave you extremely vulnerable to attack and they're pretty easy to shoot down. The vehicle of your choice should really depend on what situation you have coming up and how much armor or speed you may or may not need. 86, tires on vehicles cannot be destroyed. Now, the vehicle itself can be taken down. It has a health bar and you can physically see how much damage you're putting out on it, but you physically cannot break the tires, unfortunately. 85, UAVs are a great thing to buy for your killstreaks, and they generally reveal which way the enemy is facing depending on the arrow that you see. Now, this isn't always necessarily 100% accurate, but if you're paying to the arrows and the general setup and positioning of those red dots, you can kind of see what their plan may or may not be, and if they if are aware of your presence. 84, managing your armor plates is so crucial in Warzone. I recommend having at least two spare at all times because you never know how much you're going to need to heal using these. It's good to always purchase some extra armor plates if you don't have any when you find shopping stations. Armor plates are not only the cheapest item you can buy at those stations, but they are your lifeline, so take care of them well. 83, speaking of which, you can carry up to five extra armor plates on your person at any given time while having still a full set of armor, so... Effectively, you and your squad can have the three on your body as well as five each in your back pocket, so you'll have absolutely a plethora to work with. 82, some of the bullets in this game have higher velocities than others. This is really speaking of some of your bolt action snipers that have the fastest, and then some of your slower velocities will be your handguns and that sort of thing. But to be honest, in Warzone, most of the bullet speeds and travel times are roughly the same. Between ARs and SMGs, the difference is very minuscule. The only time you're going to notice a tangible difference is at the extremes, of course, with those snipers versus handguns. But other than that, you can basically shoot ARs the same way you would shoot an SMG. 81, there are grenade launchers that will appear as legendary weapons. Now, these can be incredibly rare to find, but they're the grenade launchers in the sense that you know them as. A lot of damage, and your opponents are also going to have to, they'll be forced to respect your weaponry, and will think twice about making an aggressive push if you have one. 80, blueprints which are included in Modern Warfare are best looked at as cosmetic variants of other weapons. So if there's a type of shotgun that you've never seen before, but it behaves like one that you already know, it's most likely a blueprint. And some players have a lot of these, some don't have any at all, but you may come across them if you have enough playtime. 79, I did cover this in another video, but I think it's worth talking about again. Operators in this game are purely cosmetic, but that being said, I think there are some operators that are just simply better for camouflage and will help you blend in a little bit better, the ghillie suit operator is very good in Warzone. Although the differences are minor, having a slightly different character model and color can really help you blend into your environment. 78, there are four different ways a player can be revived. They can be rezzed by a teammate normally, they can self-revive, they can win a 1v1 in the Gulag, or they can be brought in by purchase at the station. This pretty much gives you unlimited options on how you want to go about bringing a teammate back or yourself if you end up dying. What that also means for you is you need to be aware of when your enemies can respawn and using what method at any given point in the game. 77, the smoke grenade tactical equipment are very good for reviving teammates. Now, these are good if you're caught in an open field, a teammate goes down, you can pop a smoke right on them and it should hide that teammate from your enemy's sight and giving you enough time to revive them. Now, you do have to be careful because the smoke t does take at least like a second to come out. So unfortunately, it's not instantaneous, but it is good enough to generally get re reses off. 76, you will bleed out faster the more consecutive downs you get. If you go down once, but you get revived and then you go down again and maybe for a third time, you're going to bleed out faster each time. So you need to make a decision very quickly and or just play safer. 75, the RPG weapon is very good for putting out damage and especially good at hitting vehicles, but can be very inaccurate at range. It's not very reliable past like 100 meters. It, it'll tend to go off in its own random direction. It's better used in a very limited space and with not a lot of uh, extra error that can be made.
74, there will be an auditory hum when a loot crate is near you. It's similar to the Fortnite chest, but it's a bit more of like an electronic hum, and you'll be able to tell how close you are to one based on that. 73, when it comes to my recommendation on volume settings, I honestly recommend playing with slightly higher than normal volume as there are a lot of subtle sounds that are absolutely crucial in this game and footsteps being one of them, but many other things that are, you know, very quiet that you'll need to hear. I say bumping up that sound just a bit more than you're used to can be just what you need in Warzone. 72, crouch walking can slightly dampen the audio that your footsteps are putting out in this. Now, it isn't dramatic compared to regular walking, but if you really do need to keep a low profile and stay as quiet as possible, crouch walking is not a bad idea, especially if you just don't want to flat out go prone. 71, if you do want to stay as silent as possible, but not hinder your movement in, in any way whatsoever, dead silence is the best way to go about it. It's a field upgrade, and you're definitely going to want to take advantage of that if possible. 70, you can sprint while applying armor. Now, this is very useful, as this is your only way of not being as vulnerable as possible while putting in armor, because of course you can't shoot, you can't really do anything other than that action, but you can at least keep your movement speed up, making you a bit harder to hit. 69, some materials on this game, like thin wood can be shot through with bullet penetration and if you run fmj from your loadout that makes that job even easier you may be able to get through some surfaces like thick metals and even concrete no matter what though even with fmj the bullets will be softened going through any material at all so just keep that in mind 68 standing still is actually going to increase your shot accuracy now unfortunately this means that you become a very vulnerable target especially if you're out in the open and if somebody is going to third party you but standing still does give you the best opportunity to hit accurate shots 67, coming out of sprint is going to severely increase the time to ADS and increase that lag that you have before you can aim, so it's best if you're expecting a gunfight soon to pretty much just not sprint at all. You don't lose a ton of movement speed, and your gun is going to be ready much faster. 66, a super sprint, which can be performed by double tapping your sprint button, is the absolute fastest way your character can move, but also is going to provide the most amount of lag before you can re-aim down the sight. So you'll have to drop your gun back down to hip level and then go and aim. So there's a significant delay in between then super sprinting should only be used when you're trying to cross a great distance and you don't think you're going to be shot at 65 Molotovs can burn slightly around corners. And so this means it's very good for finishing off downed enemies who may have crawled behind a rock or some sort of tree. If you can hit them, the fire will sprawl around them and will generally take them out based on how good your throw was. 64 crouch spraying is crucial for hitting the first shots in a gunfight now what this allows you to do is make your own player model profile a little bit smaller for your enemy but also increases those first shot accuracy this means if you're going to be going for an extended spray don't do it while standing and moving even if to avoid shots for the most part try to crouch spray if possible as you will have the best shot of hitting your target 63 going prone is actually going to give you the most accuracy when firing and also makes the lowest amount of noise but the down downside of course is it's you're very easy and vulnerable while you're prone this works in cases of drop shotting where you go prone for a very brief period of time which can throw off your enemy's aim and also cut down your own recoil but again if you're proning out in the middle of like a field or on a hill you do leave yourself very open to headshots and there's no way around that 62, speaking of which, drop shotting is still very viable when you're disadvantaged in a gunfight. So when your enemy is approaching you, let's say you know he has more health, the drop shot can give you just the amount of time you need to get those extra bullets and will help even the fight. It doesn't work every time, but it is a tool you can use in your arsenal. 61, armor will display an icon when broken. Now this goes both ways. When you're shooting an enemy, you'll see a small blue armor hit marker pop up along with a busted sign. And when you get your own armor broken, it will show on your screen in the corners. This is just a useful indicator to know how much health your enemy probably has and also keeping track of your own armor situation as well. 60, sliding around corners is kind of an important tool to use, especially in the early game. When you're trying to catch someone by surprise and if they have a better gun than you, sliding around a corner can not only throw off their aim, but also throws in the element of surprise making the most unexpected play ever and you'll more than likely pull off the gunfight when used appropriately 59 going hand in hand with that peeker's advantage is still very much something that exists in here and people take advantage of now if you want a better explanation on peeker's advantage i recommend you watch my 100 tips and tricks of just modern warfare in general video that goes into an in-depth explanation on how it works and why it's a thing but basically peeker's advantage means if you're being the aggressor in a gunfight and peeking someone else you have generally 
literally a few frames of advantage before they can see you, making you make a decision that much faster. 58, parachutes can be cut and redeployed for extra speed and glide distance. Now, you'll want to ideally pull out your parachute the moment you hit maximum velocity, which is when you put your gun away, and then redeploying your parachute and then cutting again will give you a huge speed boost, and it can also give you a ton of distance that you otherwise wouldn't have. The optimal way to drop is still being figured out, and I honestly don't know if this is the best way to go about it yet because not everyone's discovered it. However, this may change over time. 57, your sensitivity settings are very important regardless of the platform you're on. Whether you're a controller player or mouse and keyboard, what I generally do for me, the practices I like, is be, to be able to do a 180 in one mouse flick or in one stick push, basically. And you can determine if you can do those 180s consistently regardless of the sensitivity, then you've probably got it correct. If you're new to FPS gaming, I recommend playing on a fairly low sensitivity while you get used to it and can be readjusted as you get more comfortable. 56, vehicles will show up on the mini map. Now, they'll also come up with a red indicator if an enemy is driving them, and you'll be able to track exactly where they're going. As soon as they get out of the vehicle, that icon will change from red to gray, so you know it's unmanned. This means you need to be very mindful when you and your squad are driving a vehicle because you're not only visible on the map, but you're also very easy to detect when it comes to audio also. The cars are very loud in this game. 55, you can swap seats while in cars. Now, this can be done either from the driver's perspective or even just a passenger. The reason this is important, you'll want to be able to seat swap depending on if you're playing by yourself and you want to shoot somebody from a vehicle, you can swap to the passenger and pull out your gun. Or if you're being shot at it while you're in a team car, you can swap around making it a little bit harder for the enemy to hit you. More than likely, you're still going to get hit, but you may not die if you are able to avoid just a couple of bullets. 54, just in general, try to always be moving as much as you can. Even if it's just wiggling around while you're in the middle of a field, you, there are some uh, cases where you cannot move at all when like reviving a teammate or purchasing something at a station. Those, you physically can't move, which is fine. But try to be moving around pretty much just as much as you can if you're not doing anything else, just so you don't get caught by surprise or easily headshotted. 53, you can crouch spam when you're peeking over a building or into a window. This is basically just spamming your crouch mechanic where... It it's hard to line up a headshot on you or even see your character model entirely, depending on if you're on a rooftop. This technique is great for trying to gather information and you don't want to necessarily expose all of your body. 52, the gulag can be easily won by baiting people out to make a mistake. Because you don't really have a lot of equipment in the gulag, you generally want to make people miss or think that you've missed and then set them up for a kill. Now, obviously, 1v1s are going to happen. You're going to lose some of them. That's just, you're, never, you're not going to win them 100% of the time, but you can play it safe to get the most amount of highest percentage wins possible. 51, speaking of which, teammates can actually call out while they're in the gulag as well to help you out a little bit. If they're dead as well and they're watching you from the top floor, they can see your round going on, spectate where your enemy is, and then call them out and see what sort of moves they're making, and you can respond accordingly. This is a very valid strategy you can use and helps bring that teammate communication a long way. 50, the sniper rifle glint can be seen from fairly far away. So this means you don't really get to scope that much for free in this game without exposing yourself. Scoping will come up with a very bright flare and can be seen from hundreds of meters away, giving your exact position away, potentially you and your whole squad to everyone else. So scoping should be done like tactically and shouldn't be freely used, I don't think. It's just good to err on the side of caution, I think, when it comes to running a sniper rifle yourself. 49, you can shoot on ladders unless you get rid of your pistol. If you already have two guns and one of them is not your handgun, then you're not able to shoot on ladders, unfortunately, anymore. There is actually a lot of utility in keeping your pistol, but in my experience, it's really not worth the trade-off of not carrying two primary weapons. 48, you can keep the door shut at a compound that you've looted in order to trick an enemy into thinking uh, no one's already been there. Now, this is the oldest trick in the book, but it's something that still works if done correctly. So if you loot a compound and you're going to stay there for a while, you can shut all of the doors inside and outside, letting a team get comfortable in going to loot that and only for you to pop out at the very last second and take them by surprise. 47, your parachute does not auto-deploy in-game. Now, I learned this the hard way. I thought it would my very first game, but you have to manually deploy it yourself, and you can do it at pretty much the last second before you hit the ground. I'm still experimenting with the best ways to parachute, but just keep in mind that it will not auto-deploy. A lot of people I, I can see are going to take some L's because of this one. But hey, if you watch this video, then you're already one step ahead of the curve. 46, you can share money amongst you and your teammates, and we touched on this a little bit earlier, but it's important to 
pull your money together depending on the streaks and the strategy that you want. Whether y'all want self revives or to bring in potentially a lost teammate, it's important to always pull your resources in the most effective and optimal way possible. This requires constant communication, and if you're playing with randoms, it might be a little bit difficult to do. 45, being the driver of most vehicles gives you a third person view perspective, and you can actually use this to your advantage to either peek around a corner or see how an enemy is posted up. Things that you wouldn't otherwise get in your first person perspective can be easily obtained by just sitting on a vehicle, not even driving it. 44, the gas mask equipment will briefly protect you from the zone. Now, all you need to do is pick these up when you find them as loot, or you can purchase them from the station, and the mask will provide you a brief few seconds of immunity from the gas, but they do not last long whatsoever. Eventually, they will break, and you will start taking damage. This is just like, you can make tactical plays with them, and there's no reason not to carry one. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. 43, accepting contracts in this game will give you tons of opportunity for loot and also money amongst you and the rest of your squad and I always recommend doing them because not only are they fairly easy to do tasks but they also have great rewards for doing so don't ignore them when you come across it 42, speaking of which, some contracts will actually tag a specific enemy on the map and give you the general location of where they're going to be. This can go both ways, of course, where you can be the one that's contracted, meaning your position is now compromised to that squad, and you have to be very careful about how you're positioned when your squad is being hunted. 41, most gunfire will be revealed on the minimap. Now, there are some exceptions, of course. You can ghost off the minimap, or you can even use suppressors, which are actually pretty good in Warzone, I found. This is somewhat of a controversial mechanic because most BRs don't have enemies appearing on the minimap when they're firing. This takes a somewhat different approach, and so far I think it works, but it's a mechanic I'm still sort of uh, figuring out. 40, loadout drops are visible to virtually everyone, and this means while they will have great rewards and you'll be able to reap some amazing benefits, they don't come without a price. It can be fairly highly contested and can often result in your squad being completely wiped when being too greedy for the loadouts, so be careful when you're approaching these. 39, mounting your weapon will make you incredibly stationary and vulnerable, but will reduce your recoil as much as possible and is fairly versatile depending on what you can do it on. You can mount on crates or around corners, and mounting is not something I recommend to use in every gunfight, but it's a super situational thing, and you'll get used to knowing when you, you should and should not pull it out. 38, the trophy system equipment is very good at blocking all incoming projectiles. This means like grenades and, and stuff, all the spam that you get at the end of the game. This is great when the last circle lands in an open field and you're just being bombarded with explosives. A trophy system will solve that right away. Of course, it's not going to block bullets. You still got to be on top of your game for gunfighting, but will nullify most incoming throwables and equipment. 37 slugshot shotguns have a zeroing distance of about 30 meters. This means after 30 meters, that slug is going to start to fall off, meaning you'll have to compensate for that. Slug rounds and shotguns are very effective if you're able to hit your target, but missing will grant you a severe punishment, so be careful. These are arguably one of the most difficult things to shoot in this game because you have to be somewhat up close, and they do have a little bit of a bullet drop, and you have to be fairly accurate with them using them too, so slugs are, are not for everyone. 36, on the flip side of that, Pellet shotguns, however, do not drop off at all. Even at that distance of 30 meters, they're not going to fall off. Sometimes they just won't hit at a longer distance whatsoever, but they will not have to be compensated for, and you want to land as many pellets as possible, of course. You can tighten up where your pellets are going to go by aiming down the sights on your shotgun as well. 35, the stopping power equipment upgrade are going to greatly increase the power and damage that your bullets put out. Now, this is different to FMJ. FMJ doesn't increase the DPS of, uh, of each bullet regularly but stopping power does this works great on beefing up some guns that maybe just don't have the highest damage per second and it makes guns that already have a lot of damage absolute machines they're very good at chewing through armor as well so i recommend having a full clip of this when you're going up against a whole squad 34 self revives do not instantly activate what i mean by that is you need to go down and then still put in the syringe yourself and play out that whole revive animation which can be read by your opponents and if they see that happening they're more than likely just going to flush you and i think a lot of Warzone players tend to do that because you never really know who has a self-revive and who doesn't, so you may as well just finish the job on everyone. 33, the sentry gun equipment that you can purchase, to be honest, is not very useful, and I, I don't think you should buy them. Now, these aren't the cheapest thing, but they're also not the most expensive equipment. They're not very special because you have to manually shoot from them. They're not like a fully automated one. That would be nice if they were, but I honestly think they're probably the worst buyable in the game currently. 32, it's important to be aware of your positioning as well as what point in the game 
game you're at because players can parachute back in from the gulag and spawn just right on top of you which has happened to me multiple times already and it's it's pretty surprising when it happens once the gulag is closed you don't really have to worry about somebody flying in on top of you but until then it's pretty late in the game anybody could just show up at any point so you have to always be aware regardless of where you are in relation to the zone 31 if you get an auditory message from your announcer that a personal uav has been called in and it's on your position this means there's somebody using a uav and you're you're within their range so you can almost use that as a reverse uav and sort of turn that around on them knowing that there's an enemy now within your distance also number 30 speaking of which using your uav and pulling up your full map is the most effective way in my opinion to use it now you're going to get a lot of information on your mini map but you'll get a much better comprehensive and detailed version of the situation in front of you by using your full map rather than relying on the circular mini map 29, it's worth having at least one member of your squad with thermal scopes as they can see very easily through smoke grenades. Whether somebody's trying to res a teammate or maybe put some armor on, anybody with a thermal is going to be able to spot them out super easily and can almost nullify the effect entirely. It's not recommended that everyone on your squad has a thermal scope, but at least one to be able to communicate and call out enemies is always a good thing. 28, claymores can be spotted around corners by detecting their red lasers that they give off. Now, to be honest, claymores aren't that big of a problem in war zone at least they haven't been so far i don't know if that's going to change but claymores if they ever get to a point where they're really bad you can be a little bit more careful by watching for those red lasers when entering a building but to be honest they're not a huge problem at the moment but you also if you're using claymores want to hide those red lasers as much as you can 27 when playing inside of a compound you're going to want to break all of the windows in there to be able to shoot from them the windows severely hinder the distance and clarity at which you can see breaking them does make a little bit of noise but it's not that big of a deal it's it's going to provide you a net advantage in the end breaking windows is so crucial in this game like i noticed that right off the bat 26 you can also slide while applying armor and the reason i want to bring this up you can make your player model so awkward and hard to hit and you can buy yourself a few crucial seconds to get another armor play in before you end up dying this has saved my life multiple times it's a strategy i think is absolutely worth getting good at 25 you could use your parachute not just for the early spawn game and then actually entering the match you could jump from building to building or get down from a very high distance by deploying your parachute and this can be used pretty much uh infinitely slight downside to parachuting is that you do become vulnerable it's very easy to see and you're pretty slow in the air so you're easy to pick off when parachuting but generally it isn't a problem when done in a quick motion 24 when you respawn with your teammates you're gonna have almost no loot you will not have the stuff you had when you died so it's recommended that your teammates set you up at least with a gun and maybe one extra armor plate sometimes it can be very hard to get back on your feet after dying maybe once or twice and still having nothing late in the game if your teammates are able to provide some extra weapons for you by looting or however the other means are that will at least give you a fighting chance and you won't be completely useless 23 cars will continue to run the engines even after they've been exited and this is something crucial to know because not only when you're parked somewhere at a compound or an enemy team is and they're trying to pretend like they're not there if that car has been used the engine is going to stay on and even even when you're trying to hide out, the engine will be always running for people to hear. 22, the EOD perk, which can be obtained from the multiplayer loadouts, is a great tool for reducing explosive damage and avoiding grenade spam that other teams may bring to the table. Now, they won't entirely nullify the damage explosives put on, but will reduce it to a point where they're almost not even an issue at all. 21, light grasses and bushes actually don't render a couple of hundred meters away. So what this means is potentially you're camping and you're laying down inside of a bush on your screen, you're entirely hidden. But if somebody is within your view, uh, hundreds of meters away with a scope and they can see your character, they will be able to see you just flat out on the ground. The bush won't even be there for them because it isn't rendered. And so you're not as safe as you might think. Keep this in mind. If you choose to lay down or crouch in a bush is that if there's an extremely long distance where somebody could potentially potentially be, you might not be super safe. Number 20, the gas mask cannot be toggled, which I think should be an addition added in the future. It is automatic at the moment. As soon as you step into the zone, it will deploy and then of course break over time. But I think the gas mask should be toggleable just because I feel like the option given that would be better. But hopefully in the future, this does become an option where it's a little bit more flexible. 
19, remembering that you can reload while you're aimed down the sights is a great tool to use because you don't have to burn those precious few seconds of re-ADSing after, you know, refilling your magazine and is such a thing that I don't think people take as much advantage of as they should. Some weapons, of course, do well with this more than others. LMGs aren't great at reloading while ADS because it's a good couple seconds while you're vulnerable, but SMGs, on the other hand, and even ARs can be done virtually without any restriction. 18, be aware that there is a perk to track foot steps. You can use this yourself to see where enemies are walking, but you also have to be aware that any enemy at any given time can have the tracker perk while they can see where you're running. Now, this becomes a problem when you're trying to outmaneuver a squad and you think you may have gotten away. They could be tracking down your every move and just be waiting for you to slip up, so it's just better, in my opinion, to double check. 17, cluster strikes are a great streak to use in the late game and are also wonderful at finishing off downed enemies and squads that are pinned. Now, this basically allows you to use the laser pointer, calling in a cluster strike on a certain area, and downed enemies can do pretty much nothing about this. Even if they're behind cover, the cluster strike will more than likely clean them up unless they're in a building, and it makes it very hard for their teammates to even approach and revive. 16, because this is trios only, I think splitting vehicles amongst all of you is a great idea. Now, when you're driving around and maneuvering the map, if you have as many vehicles as possible at your leisure, you take advantage of them. Don't all go in one car. If there's three vehicles available and there's three of you, take all of them. You can all drive in the same direction, but the chances of you particularly getting shot at and all of your teammates going down uh, if you ran into a gunfight are severely diminished when you're doing this. If one of you goes down or even just one vehicle gets blown up, that's not the rest of the team and there's still two of you alive. It could have been way worse. So splitting vehicles is something you're going to want to always do. 15, it's important to be careful though to come to a stop before exiting a vehicle as if you exit at too high of a speed, you will either die or take a large amount of damage. So be careful when getting in and out of these. 14, when it comes to gunplay, bullet drop for the most part is very minimal. Even at hundreds of meters, you don't have to overcompensate with sniper rifles that much. Now, that can be a little bit tricky when you're shooting an AR at really long distances, but generally the bullet drop isn't as drastic as you might think, certainly not like PUBG or even Battlefield games. The bullets are projectiles, not hit scans, but the travel time and the drop velocity is very minimal. 13, wearing a watch on your operator does not affect your recoil control or your handling any way whatsoever. I don't know why this became a rumor or who started it, but if somebody's told you that wearing a watch in game will alter the way your guns play is just incorrect. And I don't really know why this ever became a thing. 12, some of the LMGs have a slight trigger delay and I can see some people getting confused onto why this is happening. All of the other guns behave as they should, but with the big LMGs that are very common, there is a slight delay in the time between you pull the trigger and when it starts firing. So you almost have to overcompensate and preemptively fire when you know a gunfight is coming for best results. 11, you can drop some of your spare loot at the bottom of a house to look like it's uh, untaken and you can wait for a squad to come in and basically just use it as bait. This is again a very situational trick, but if you have some spare like armor plates or ammo or whatever, you think a squad is going to go for it. While they're looting that stuff up, you can easily take them out. Number 10, scopes on your sniper should always be steadied when fired. Now, I've tried both with and without. I was trying to see if there was a difference pretty much at all, and there really is. There seems to be a little bit less aim flinch when you get hit while you're steadied, and also just, just tends to make your shot more accurate. It sounds simple, I know, but it's always worth just getting to a muscle memory habit of steadying your scope the moment you ADS. There's really no downside to it, and uh, it does help out your shot a ton. Number nine, speaking of scopes, the zoom on which your scope is set can also be changed, either magnified or pulled back a little bit, depending on what your preference is. Also, this will depend a lot on the type of scope you're running, but this is good uh, for longer range gunfights, and you can pull it back for a little bit more medium range. Your scope zoom does not affect the way your aim works or your bullet velocity at all. It is exactly the same, just a different magnification. Number eight, melees are not always a one hit. They will be if you sneak up on somebody and run up to them and perform an execution, but a one hit melee right in the front will not do the trick. You'll have to hit them multiple times and you can do this old trick from COD just called the, I guess it's just called the shot punch where you hit him with one bullet and then melee and that seems to do the job a little bit better, but melees are not going to be just like an, an old knifing from Call of Duty like some of you may be used to. Seven, the armored 
barrier equipment is very good for open field endings when you there is absolutely no cover in sight. These are deployable. You can put them wherever you like, and they're pretty much bulletproof. They can be broken over time, but they might be just enough to give you the cover that your enemy doesn't have. Number six, there are ammo stations that can be found around the map, and I don't know where they all are at the moment, but they're pretty easy to find in most compounds. These will just instantly refill both of your weapons. It's good to have because you don't always need to rely on buying ammo boxes from the buyable stations and these are a much more reliable source I think. Number five you can carry both a lethal and tactical piece of equipment so you don't have to necessarily sacrifice a smoke grenade if you want to carry a frag and vice versa. You can generally carry more tacticals than you can lethals but it's similar to how multiplayer has always been in terms of what you can hold and how many. Number four the gulag will close fairly late in the match. What ends up happening is there will be no longer respawns available. There's a timer on the left of your screen uh, late in the game that will tell you when it's getting ready to close. At this point, you can rely on no more enemy respawns, but also if you die, you will not be able to use that feature to come back in the game. Number three, there are some contract rewards that will show you where the next two safe zones are going to be, which is a useful tool, but in the way that these are designed, it's, it's honestly not entirely useful if you can understand the way the zone algorithm works. And that leads nicely into number two, which is the zone can be easily predicted for the most part. Now, I'm not 100% on how this zone algorithm works because it seems like half of the safe zone spawns out of bounds anyways, but generally the center of a safe zone in every BR has to be in a playable area. So it's really not going to be over somewhere where you can swim and it's not also not going to be like the center of a building. So with that in mind, you can start to predict where the next zones are going to go from the beginning of the game. If you want to win, I recommend just play center at all times. You can play the outer fringes of the zone if you want more kills, but if you're worried about winning and that's like your absolute goal, literally just play the center. You can do these contracts if you want to know exactly where the zone is going. But my point is, it's pretty easy to predict once you understand how it works. But anyways, guys, coming in at the number one spot of things to learn about Warzone, hot dropping is kind of dead in this BR. Now, because there's no like higher tiers of armor, everything is on the same level. And the only difference in terms of that is weapon rarity, which again, are pretty easy to obtain through other means. Hot dropping is pretty much pointless. Land wherever you want. There's not much difference in the loot you're going to have by the end of the game. It's really all about positioning. So I recommend play the center of the zone if you do care about getting more wins. But anyways, that is what I got for 100 tips and tricks in Call of Duty Warzone. Honestly, I really enjoyed this as a BR and it brings a lot of new things to the table that I think are good for the genre and I recommend you guys try it out as it's free to play for everyone. If you guys enjoy this enough, I'm definitely going to be posting a lot more of this on the channel because I genuinely believe it's enjoyable, but let me know what you guys thought of the video down below in the comment section. Also, if you made it this far, you are a top tier legend. Leave a little emoji of your choice in the comments because you'll be part of that special club. If you know, you know. I'll, I'll know that you made it to the end of the video. But seriously, thank you guys so much for sticking around this long if you did make it this far you're absolutely crazy if you did enjoy drop a like subscribe if you're brand new and also if you want to go follow me over on twitch i stream almost every day the link to that is in the description i'd really appreciate it but other than that have you hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you all on the next live stream or the next video have a good one everyone i gotta go and peace out